one day we can have a Muslim majority nation here in Canada, right in your face. We have Canadian. Uh, in the third case, it actually didn't actually get to my office. In the second case, um, no, I don't know. While we destroy your housing, we buy your land, we change your laws, we will go much, much deeper while you stick to this juvenile nonsense. Keep doing it, baby. The, the way Trudeau is running it, it scares the shit out of me. I'm like, you guys are sliding into communism. You're sliding every day. They push a little bit further, a little bit further. Yeah. I mean, if you don't get rid of that guy, if you don't turn that thing around. You My God, what a week it's been. I mean, this has been nonstop action, and we're going to get more of it today. The main topic of today's video is going to be foreign interference, runaway immigration. But before we get into all that, because... Let's face it, as exciting as things are right now, they're also kind of dour, right? It's kind of a heavy subject and things are not looking good for Canada right now. So before we rip into all this, I just want to start with a uh, lighthearted video and it made a lot of people on social media laugh as well. If you happen to know who created this video, please throw their name down in the comments so we can give them proper credit. But here we go. Enjoy. So is Kamala doing okay? Nope. She's down, Joe. Bye. Uh, I think they found out that she's retarded. And now we're basically fucked. Trump is killing us at the polls. So yes, we're going to lose Joe. Damn it. Wait, wait. What if I come back to run again? As candidate? Yeah. Well, uh, let me put it this way, Joe. The only person in this world who is even more retarded than Kamala Harris is basically you. So no, come Joe, on, man. you're just not going give back yet. Shot. Let's let it all play out. Okay, let's just... We'll talk later, Joe. Okay. Women looking fine up in here. And that is some pure gold. It really is upsetting, though, that I have to filter out some of the words to get around the YouTube algos, but so it is. Now, let's pretend that Canada was a movie. Let's say it was an installment in the Fallen franchise, as the thumbnail for this very video has indicated. Instead of telling a linear story, how about we start with the end in mind? How Canada will end up if we don't pull up our big boy pants and take action. So let's take a look at a video that was originally published by Rebel News and resurfaced in a huge way yesterday, really making its rounds and really getting a lot of criticism and pushback, as you'll see for yourself. Let's take a look. One day we can have a Muslim majority nation here in Canada, right in your face. We have Canadian law here, and you say that you want Sharia law to displace Canadian law. That doesn't sound very respectful. In majority, you wouldn't have any other option. Go to your queen and tell her to change the laws. Change the laws to what, sir? To Sharia law? No, change the laws to, to not allow any more Muslims to come to Canada. We owe our allegiance and our loyalty first and foremost to our religion, not to the queen, to be honest. When I went for my uh, so-called oath, I was silent, I didn't say anything. It was your responsibility to make sure you got it out of me. So when I didn't say anything, I'm not, I'm not liable. All right, so as you can see here, that man in the video is a very ardent proponent of Sharia law, and he wants to bring it to Canada. Now the one thing, and we're, we're seeing a lot of talk of Sharia law lately, but the one answer that we just are not getting well, because we all know the answer, but the one answer we cannot get those who support Sharia law to tell us is why did you leave your country? Why did you come to a Western country that is 100% incompatible with Sharia law? Well, we all know the answer to that. In fact, we can see it in this following video. <laughs> And this video that you just watched is yet another point of contention for many Canadians. Not the apologists, of course. They see this as a form of cultural enrichment. It's a cultural enhancement to block off the biggest city in Canada's arteries and prevent people from getting around to doing what they need to do to support the economy. And then we also have to look at the national anthem or 
the rendition of it that we used for the intro for today's video. The Canadian National Anthem can be sung in one of two official languages. You'd figure that'd be enough. Some people might even argue that the Punjabi rendition that we heard in that intro is an homage to Canada. And you know what? In some ways, maybe it is. I'm not going to take away from that. If the person who came up with that idea had genuinely good intentions, like they were doing it because that was their way of showing that their culture is our culture, you know, but it's like they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So here you are, you have millions of Canadians who can understand what's being sung in one of two languages. You throw in Punjabi or any other foreign language, and then you're essentially leaving everybody else in the lurch. I mean, the only reason they have any idea what it is you're singing is because they know what the lyrics are supposed to be. They don't know what you might actually be singing. Now, if there's one thing I'm not going to do is go through all of the minutes of the foreign interference inquiry, because I'm sure you've seen that on plenty of other YouTube channels and all over social media. So I don't want to tell you more of what you already know. So all we're going to do is play one short clip of Trudeau. But before we do, I just want to read something that came up just this morning, and it is very telling. So we saw in Act 1 we're, the direction that we're headed. So if this was Act 2 of our movie, this is the perfect lead-in. I'll read it to you now. Immigration Minister Mark Miller says that Palestinians who have fled Gaza will receive transitional financial assistance and supports after they arrive in Canada. The Immigration Department says the funds will help cover basic needs such as shelter, food, and clothing, with more details to be shared at a later date. Like many Canadians, especially growing up, I took great pride in being part of a country that takes care of people who are in very dire situations. And of course, I'm not going to be ignorant and say that none of the Palestinians coming across are not in need of help. That much is plainly true. I mean, we all seen the footage of what's going on in Gaza right now. That place is completely leveled. I mean, out of all the other counterattacks that Israel has launched against Hamas. There is, this time, I, I just don't see it ever coming back to anything close to what it used to be. Gaza is done, like they're done. We also have seen just how piss poor Canada's management of the vetting process has been, and we are definitely letting several wolves into the hen house. Do not tell me we do not have terror cells marching in those little buffoon parades that are going on right now. We're about to see the full extent of Trudeau's capabilities when it comes to handling something as dire as the foreign interference situation. So let's take a look at Trudeau's complete and utter incompetence. Take a deep breath before you watch. Do you have any idea why no reply was ever given to all of those that requested the authorization? Well, I think as as was stated in in the first case, it was it was in process when COVID happened, and we all moved to different to different priorities and, and virtually. Uh, in other cases, uh, in the third case, it actually didn't actually get to my office. In the second case, um, no, I don't know why. Okay, because if an authorization is is asked from your office and no authorization is needed, at least in in your view. Usually, do you, not you personally, but your office give uh, the information to the person requesting the authorization or, or not at all? Uh, it, it depends on the, uh, on the amount of, of, of the, the amount of notes, the, the various priorities of them um, as they go through. I really can't speak to the, to the um, challenges around that particular one, other than saying that uh, I was always very clear that briefings to parliamentarians uh, is a good thing. Thank you. What's even more shameful about what you've just watched there is that Trudeau is wearing an earpiece throughout this inquiry. So the fact that he can't get his facts straight or can't come up with better reasons, even with the assistance of a lawyer, that's the speculation go around that it's a lawyer that's talking into his ear. Whoever's helping him on the other side of that earpiece is really not doing a great job. Now, it's not as if we don't already know that Justin Trudeau is an incompetent pretty boy. And we've seen, I don't want to go over the entire body of the footage from the inquiry, but the fact that he tried to throw the conservatives under the bus, no wonder he tried to do that. I mean, you see, he cannot 
handle things on his own. So he had to do that. That was his only lifeline and he blew it. And now we're going to take a look at testimony from a director over at CSIS and what he has to say. And this is something shocking. He says that this has been going on since the Mulroney years. So let's go over his testimony. Chinese operators. It is also caused by our own candidate elected official political staff that are either naive or calculate intentionally to gain power with the assistance of the Chinese government. The Chinese intelligence service are so good at it because they understand the electoral system, the weakness of the human being, and their, their work is on long-term gain. So today, you find I want to be a very weaker clear. leader than Trudeau. Trudeau. Trudeau checks off all the boxes that foreign actors are looking for. He's dumb, he's unsophisticated, he's completely narcissistic, and he is terminally addicted to attention. He needs constant attention. And that makes him easy pickings for the Chinese government. So today, I want to be very clear, and I want to, pr uh, and I want to be very clear. We can prove that every federal government from Mr. Mulroney to Mr. Trudeau have been compromised by agent of the communist China. Every government were informed at one point or another. Every government choose to ignore CISU's warning either by negligence, self-interest, or partnership. A partisanship, sorry. Every government were infiltrated by agent of influence acting on behalf of the Chinese government, and we knew who they were. Every government took decisions that they are that are questionable about China and can only be explained by interference exercise from within or motivated by self-interest. Not only the sitting government have been compromised, but all federal par political parties have been compromised at one point or another. The inaction of the federal government, all federal governments, were led to attacks on many municipal and provincial government. Ultimately, every government have been part of the problem, not the solution. And I and remember, not only China is practicing interference. Continue. Interesting that he should say that. We all know that India is trying to muscle in on China's turf. China is essentially a dying animal. Uh, we're all well aware that they're... Uh, we're all well aware that their one child rule has completely blown up in their faces and they are facing a catastrophe, a population catastrophe. So while, China, so while China is still very much a threat to the West, I now see India as the truest threat, largely because of numbers. While players such as Russia, North Korea, and Iran are truly aggressive states that we need to monitor very closely, India has a reverse population crisis. They have way more people than they can sustain. It's a problem that will not abate anytime soon. And the only solution they have right now is covert colonialism. And that is what's going on. Considering these facts, I respectfully would like to propose some actions to be taken. One, establish a mandatory process for all future elected official, political staff and volunteers to swear and to sign a declaration that they are not under the influence or acting on behalf of a foreign government or entity. This form will clearly warn of possible criminal procedures in case of intentional deception. Two, eliminate the possibility for foreigners to vote for, for the selection of candidates and nominees. This is an obvious nonsense. Three, give an, expli an explicit and clear security uh, briefing to all newly elected MP and have them sign that they attended and understood the briefing with again warning of repercussion in case of deception. Prevention is our best defense. I'm 100% in agreement with the notion of making sure that foreigners cannot vote for nominees. Preferably, I would like to extend the... Ideally, I would love to see new arrivals being restricted from voting in the general election. Not just nominees, but for the general election for a longer period of time. I believe the time period right now is still three years. I'd like to see it bumped up to at least five years. So all these pledges that this gentleman is suggesting they sign... It's good. It's literally good on paper, as they say. It's what we do if they violate those pledges, right? Um, 
We need to make our politicians afraid again. We need them to fear the consequences of betraying this country. And that's the problem with Canada. Whether it's free Palestine protesters smashing windows in the streets, chanting death to Canada, or our own elected officials betraying us to foreign interests, there are no repercussions. There are no consequences. No wonder this shit keeps happening. The Liberals are unleashing an internet censorship law known as Bill C-23. Even if they weren't, three oceans can be deplatformed at any time for any reason. That's why I want to invite you to join the Three Oceans newsletter. If standing up against mass immigration, excessive taxation, the housing crisis, and the woke agenda is important to you, joining the Three Oceans newsletter is the best move you can make. It's free and it will never be deplatformed. Unlike this channel and other social media accounts, the Three Free Oceans newsletter is no holds barred and uncensored. Also, you can count on your data being protected and not being monitored like it is on social media. So visit 3oceans.ca. Once again, that's 3oceans.ca to subscribe and beat the woke authorities trying to control the narrative like they control your government.